Hello, my name is Brandon Hast, and today we're going to cover isometric cameras in Unity 3D. I haven't had very much experience with Unity. I played with it when it was first released, and I wasn't super impressed, and I thought this isn't going to go anywhere. And I was very, very wrong. Unity is extremely successful and for good reason. It's super easy to use and very powerful. And to prove how easy it is to use, I've decided to film a series of video tutorials on how to use it, specifically Unity 4. And this is being done by a guy who has had maybe, I don't know, six hours of experience with this thing. I don't really know. I'm not, I'm not a Unity guru, but I mean, I can click buttons and make things happen which is good enough for me. So let's make a game. I'm going to make a two-dimensional game, isometric, clearly, because this is an isometric camera video. Let's go ahead and delete this main camera because I don't like the main camera. And we're going to use a method I discovered on the Unity 3D forums, posted by a guy named Motion Reactor. I'll post a link to where I found this in the description. So basically how it goes is we are going to make an empty game object. I know, this is exciting. Stick with me though. We're going to put this empty game object at origin point, zero, zero, zero in the game world, 3D game world. And yes, Unity is a 3D game engine. But it's not just that. You can easily do two dimensional games, it just requires a slightly different way of thinking. So we have our game object. Let's rename it to something that we can remember, like camera target, because that is the name used by the guy on the forums. So we have our camera target. Don't mess with it yet. Just leave it be. Don't touch it. All right? OK. So we're going to make a camera now. We could have used the main camera, but I wanted to make my own camera because that's just whatever. And this too should be close to origin. In the method that was posted on the forums, it's placed at negative 10 on the Z axis, but zero and zero on the X and Y respectively. So now that we have that set up, we want to make camera target the parent of camera. We do that simply by dragging camera on to camera target. All right, awesome. And camera target is what our camera is looking at. It's our focal point for our isometric camera. And we need to give it a rotation. And this is also going to rotate our camera. So along the horizontal x-axis, we rotate by 30. And on the vertical y-axis, we rotate by 45. And right now, we're still, we have a kind of a cone shape to our camera. That means we're still, we're still in perspective. We need to change this. So let's go to our camera and change the projection from perspective to orthographic. And now we have this awesome box that's pointed downwards. And what this means is anything in this box will be drawn the same size regardless of how far away it is from the camera itself. This square closest to the red, green, and blue widget is our near plane. Anything further this way past it is not going to be drawn by the camera. These white dots over here picked our far plane, anything past that is not going to be picked up by the camera either. So anything in between those two faces will be drawn. <coughs> so now that we have our camera, the size of it is a little large. It's set at 100. I personally like 10. And you can see the box cut super skinny. And that's fine. 
but we need to change the far plane. And I like 50. I feel like that's a good solid number. I don't know why. It's just what I like. You can set to whatever. I like 50. Moving on. We have a camera. We have a camera target. Let's add a cube. So we can see the isometric camera at work. You can see in the preview, we're going to have a cube. Let's add a light so we can see what exactly is going on. If we can find the light, point light, that's good. Let's raise this. Like that. Now you can see we have our isometric camera. Our cube is looked at from an angle and regardless of distance from the camera, it'll be drawn the exact same size. Let's go ahead and actually prove this by going to top-down mode, grabbing our cube and making a copy, put them side by side. Let's see what the camera looks like real quick. Okay, let's move this cube further in. And bring this down. Play it. And you can see that this cube is kind of behind the front cube here. Obviously, that's why this is the front cube and that's the back cube. But the back cube is much further away from the camera than this front cube, yet there is still the same size. This is cool and very, very important for our isometric world because when we create our isometric land, we want each cube to be the same size regardless of distance from the camera. So we have a very uniform tiled grid. And as you can see, it's not like, Right now, our editor is in perspective mode. You can see by this angle, these angled lines right here. Clicking those will make the lines parallel, and that's how you know you're in isometric mode. Still, it's not very straightforward what's going on in our scene, because these cubes look, they're separated here, but if you look in the game world, they look pretty close together and you have no sense of actually how far away they are from each other. So let's go ahead and select our camera target, go to game object and align view to selected. And now it looks just like a game world. And I don't like this cube, so I'm just gonna delete it because I'm lazy and don't wanna try and align it back with this cube. But now I can copy and paste this cube, move it around by holding control. And it'll move in cube units, which is one, I guess. So it'll move in units of one along the grid by holding control. And I can just go ahead and do what I'm doing. Just to make a quick little strange. Do I not copy paste that? Th there we go. Oh, uh, one more. Because that's that's cool. I like that. Okay. Split. And there you go. You now have your isometric camera set up for an isometric game in both the game world and within the editor. Pretty cool stuff. Hopefully this video was useful and helpful for you. In my next video, I will be covering prefabs. So anyways, that's the end of this video and I'll see you next time.